Kings lead obscenely luxurious lifestyles, or at least a majority of them do. It goes without saying that they are fundamentally different from the rest of us. While some kings around the world opt to live relatively regular lives and avoid spending a lot of their wealth, others chose the opposite path and spend the family fortune lavishly. When it comes to today's video, we're going to be talking about one of those kings, King Abdullah II of Jordan. We will take a look at how he came to rule, how he became one of the richest monarchs in the world, and most importantly, how he spends his vast wealth. He is a member of the Hashemite dynasty, which has ruled Jordan since 1921 and is regarded as the Prophet Muhammad's 41st generation of direct descendants. As the first child of King Hussein and Princess Muna, his second wife, Abdullah was born in Ammon. And if you were wondering how much this king is actually worth, his estimated net worth is a whopping $700 million. You might have to drop a few zeros to get closer to my own bank balance. So without wasting any more time, let's see how this rich monarch lives his life. At the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, Abdullah started his military training in 1980. Later, he was promoted to the rank of second lieutenant in the British Army. And after finishing a special studies program in Middle Eastern issues at Pembroke College, Oxford, Abdullah came home and joined the Royal Jordanian Army in 1982. He first served as a first lieutenant before rising to the positions of platoon commander and deputy commander. Later, he rose to the position of tank company commander for the 91st Armored Brigade. While on leave from the military, Abdullah attended Georgetown University's Edmund A. Walsh School of Foreign Service in 1987. He returned to the military two years later and was appointed assistant commander of the 17th Royal Tank Battalion. As a brigadier general, Abdullah assumed control of Jordan's special forces in 1994. Later, he rose to the rank of major general. Because of his upbringing, Abdullah has faith in Jordan's strong military. And this was just the start. King Hussein passed away in February 1999, and Abdullah became the new monarch. He later had more expansive executive and legislative power as the new king than is normal for a constitutional monarch. In addition to serving as Jordan's president, Abdullah also serves as its military commander. He established changes that resulted in tremendous economic growth during his rule and for liberalizing the economy. However, Abdullah found it challenging to deal with the economic challenges that followed the Great Recession in 2008 in his nation. Among the other notable events during Abdullah's reign so far has been the Arab Spring. The large-scale protests, which demanded reform throughout the Arab world, led to many civil wars. Abdullah earned praise for responding promptly to the domestic unrest in Jordan. He replaced the government, launched constitutional reforms, and made changes to laws governing public liberties and elections. Abdullah was also championed for his introduction of proportional representation to the Jordanian parliament during the general election in 2016. Overall, despite some criticisms, Abdullah is popular both domestically and internationally for maintaining stability in Jordan and for promoting dialogue between people of differing faiths. He is the longest-serving current Arab leader in the world. It all sounds pretty good for King Abdullah, but with all this publicity ultimately comes criticism. You might be asking yourself what could Abdullah be criticized for despite being King of Jordan for more than 20 years. Hamza, the half-brother of King Abdullah, the second launched an unprecedented public attack on the government alleging corruption and a lack of freedom of speech. Hamza's letter contained accusations of the government's disintegration, corruption, and incompetence, as well as assaults on the king and the state of the country, including statements regarding Jordan's delayed economic recovery from the COVID pandemic. Between the death of their father in 1999 and 2004, when Hamza's title was rescinded with resentment, Hamza served as Abdullah's crown prince. According to reports, the military officially raided Hamza's residence in Ammon and arrested two of his aides, Sharif Hassan bin Zaid and Bassan Owen Allah, as well as up to 20 others after warning the prince about his conduct, which they claim threatened security and stability in Jordan. In light of all of this, you might be questioning how King Abdullah became so wealthy. How did he amass an estimated net worth of over $750 million? What does he spend it on? And what are some of the ways King Abdullah has generated his crazy wealth? Abdullah is the owner of a global network of real estate assets worth more than $100 million. However, through a number of offshore corporations established in the British Virgin Islands, his ownership of the properties was concealed. I'm sure it's all above ground. The Pandora Papers leak made Abdullah's real estate holdings public, including his three adjacent seaside estates in Malibu's Point Dew neighborhood, as well as his homes in Ascot, London, and Washington, D.C. His lawyers asserted that they were acquired from the monarch's personal riches and through offshore corporations for security and privacy reasons, and they denied any misappropriation of public funds or tax avoidance. 
Interestingly, according to a 2022 Credit Suisse breach, Abdullah held six hidden accounts, including one with a sum of more than $224 million. According to a statement from the Royal Court, the money came from the $212 million sale of an Airbus 340 that belonged to his late father, King Hussein, and its replacement with a smaller, less expensive Gulfstream aircraft. But the real question we all want answered is how does he spend all that money? The Daily Sandbag tabloid claims that King Abdullah and his family own the opulent 82-meter yacht Sarafa. It is ranked as the world's 55th largest yacht. The yacht was constructed by Devonport Yacht in the UK, with interior design by Andrew Winch Designs. Under the marble flooring there is a heating system, and all of the faucets are gold-plated. This four-level boat can accommodate 14 guests, and it requires 20 employees to run. Over the years, the vessel has been kept in a very exclusive setting. However, it is anticipated to cost roughly $80 million, and the ongoing expenses are between $10 million and $15 million annually. Onto his car collection, it provides a window into the lives and history of the family. When his loving father passed away 18 years ago, Jordan's King Abdullah II, himself an accomplished racer and automobile enthusiast, erected a museum in his honor. It was his father's life story portrayed through his incredible collection of cars, some of which were among the most valuable in the world and others whose significance was only derived from their connection to the illustrious Jordanian royal family. Some of his favorites include the Bristol Aston Martin, a 300 SL Gullwing, and numerous Porsches. German engineering intrigued King Abdullah's father, hence the royal family's official vehicle in the museum was a Mercedes-Benz. In addition to his personal collection, King Abdullah is said to own more than $500 million worth of automobiles. In 1986 and 1988, Abdullah won Jordan's National Rally Championship. Interestingly, in addition to automobiles, King Abdullah is quite fond of motorcycles. He owns numerous Harley-Davidsons, and the monarch has frequently been seen riding a motorcycle in public. His collection of motorcycles is worth a hopping $400 million. According to the Pandora Papers, many of the king's assets were reportedly purchased using Shell Corporation names. King Abdullah spent more than $100 million on homes in the US and the UK, including a pricey residence on Malibu's Billionaire Beach. The 14,000-square-foot Mediterranean-style estate boasts an infinity pool, a gym, a movie theater, nine bathrooms, and seven bedrooms. Moreover, he spent nearly $10 million on a lavish condo in Georgetown, Washington, D.C., along the Potomac River. Floor-to-ceiling windows in this property provide sweeping views of the river. By the way, Prince Hussein, his son, is believed to have resided there while he attended Georgetown University. Interestingly, a few years later, two other flats in this building were bought, one for $2.4 million and the other for $790,000. King Abdullah also owns three multi-million dollar homes in London, including in Eton. He also has a residence in Ascot, one of the priciest towns in England. Interestingly, the Jordanian royal family, including the King of Jordan, travels in an Airbus A318-112 Elite that was bought in 2009 for roughly $50 million. The smallest aircraft in the Airbus A320 family, the A318-112 Elite, is designed for short to medium-haul flights. Despite being a corporate aircraft, Abdullah makes accommodations for a more opulent VIP layout at the expense of seating capacity. Modern technological advancements included in the airplane include laser welding, LCD cockpit displays, better lighting, and in-flight entertainment. The jet combines travel, residence, and workplace space. It has a bedroom, bathroom, study area, and dining area. Although there is room for 19 passengers, the king prefers an 8-passenger VIP arrangement. In addition to the A318,112 Elite, the Jordanian fleet previously comprised a Boeing 737-700 to and an A340-600 Prestige, with a total estimated value of between $120 million and $300 million. Well, as lavish living goes, he seems to have a luxurious enough lifestyle to rival those of Hollywood. What do you think of all his possessions, and would you prefer to hop on board his Airbus or take his Aston Martin for a drive? Not a bad choice to have, I say. If you think King Abdullah is living good, check out the video on screen. You won't believe your eyes.